In this lecture, we're going to talk about the ionization constants of acids, known as KAs. But before we talk about KAs, let's look at the ionization reaction of water. Remember, water molecules can act as both acids and bases. And in fact, if you add two water molecules together, one will act as an acid and the second one will act as a base, creating a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. In other words, if this is our acid, it will donate the H, creating an OH ion, and if this is our base, it will accept that H, creating a hydronium ion. So, now if we wanted to, we can also write the equilibrium equation for this reaction. In other words, Kw, our ionization constant for water, is equal to hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration. And in 25 degrees Celsius, this equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Now this process is called the autoionization reaction. And if you want to learn more about this reaction, check out the link below. Now, in the same way that we talk about ionization constants of water, we can also talk about ionization constants of acids. Except now, they're not Kw, they're Ka, where A is for our acid. So let's suppose we have a hypothetical acid, HA, reacting with a water molecule in a liquid state. Now what will happen? Well, this acid will donate the H, releasing the H, while the base will accept that H, creating a hydronium ion and a conjugate base. So this is our conjugate acid and our conjugate base, and our conjugate base and our conjugate acid. Now, let's write the equilibrium constant expression the same way we did for water for this acid. So Ka, our acid ionization constant, is equal to our concentration of our hydronium times our, the concentration of the conjugate base. Now in this case, our conjugate base is simply this guy here. Now both guys are included in our numerator because both guys are in an aqueous form. Remember, liquids and solids are not included, and that's why we didn't include these two uh, water molecules. Now, on the bottom, since we have an HA in the aqueous state, our conjugate acid, we must include the conjugate acid as well. So HA gets incorporated into our equilibrium constant expression. <coughs> now, what is a K value or Ka value? Well, the ionization constant is simply a ratio from a mathematical perspective. And, and what the Ka is, it's the amount of product formed over the amount of reactant left over. So, if this number is very large, then that means a lot of, a lot of product was formed and very little reactant is left over. So what does that tell us about the Ha? Well, if this reaction is favored this way, if a lot of product is formed and very little reactant is left over, that means this acid is very good at giving off that H. So it must be a very good acid by definition of an acid. So that means if our Ka is large, we have a good acid. Likewise, if our Ka is small, that means very little product is formed and a lot of reactants left over. That means this acid is very bad at releasing that H. So it's a bad acid. Now, we can deduce that if the Ka is greater than 1, then that means it's a strong acid. And if the Ka is less than 1, that means it's a weak acid. Now let's look at one more thing. So what happens if our Ka is less than 1? Then this guy must be a weak acid, but that means our conjugate base must be a good base. Likewise, if this was a good acid and our Ka was above 1, that means this, this was a bad conjugate base. <coughs> now, let's look at a few examples. Nitric acid in aqueous state could act with water to produce hydronium ion plus nitrate ion. Now the Ka for this reaction, for this acid, is 20. And that means, according to this theory, it's a very good acid. And indeed it is. Now let's look at hydrofluoric acid. So hydrofluoric acid in the aqueous state reacts with water in the liquid state to produce hydronium plus the F ion. 
Now the Ka for this reaction, for this particular acid, is very low. It's 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And that means, according to this theory, it's a bad acid. And in fact, it is a bad acid. It's a weak acid. So, now we can use this Ka value to determine whether or not an acid is a good acid or a bad acid. Now before we had to look at the polarity of the bond, we had to look at the bond strength, and we had to look at the conjugate base. Now these guys are still important, but now we have a fourth component. We can use the Ka value to determine if an acid is a good acid or a bad acid.